Yesterday, Adam Schefter broke this news um, that part of the Buffalo-Houston trade for Stephon Diggs, the Texans have wiped out the final three years of Diggs' contract. So they took $3.5 million that was owed to him in 2025, moved it up to this year. So this year, in 2024, they will pay Stephon Diggs $22.52 million, and then he will be a free agent. And my immediate reaction at first was, don't like this. Why not? But then I thought about it. My, my originally I was like, "Well, you gave up a second round pick for a rental." But then I, but then you posted on social media one of the clips from our interview with Tyler Dunn, and it was about talking about Stephon Diggs and being motivated in his relationship with his team. I'm like, okay. So if we're concerned about Stephon Diggs being happy and wanting a new contract, well, one of the ways to fix all of that is to give him very clear motivation which is just, here's $22 million and free agency afterwards. So why don't you go put up 1,800 yards, take the Texans to a Super Bowl, and get paid $25 million a year? It's put up good numbers. It's also be a better teammate than yeah. you at least have been portrayed to be. And it does seem like, based off of our interview with Dunn, that Diggs' issues were more with, in Minnesota head coach Mike Zimmer in Buffalo, head coach Sean McDermott than it was with any of the quarterbacks. So that makes you feel a little bit more optimistic about it. I noticed, Joe, a lot of people online seem to change their mind entirely on the trade. And I I have a couple of thoughts on that. One, we need to stop clutching pearls over spending in lottery tickets. Trading a second round pick for one year of Stephon Diggs is probably going to net you more than a second-round pick would in one season. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you want to nail a second-round pick. You are hoping that a player that you find in the second round is going to have a good season. But remember all those guys that the Houston Texans have drafted in the second round? Xavier Suofilo, Brandon Harris... This is a franchise that has not had a lot of luck in the second round. And you got to remember the second round of the draft. It does not always work out. Lonnie Johnson, second round pick. Max Sharping, second round pick. Ross Blacklock, second round pick. Zach Cunningham, Bernardrick McKinney. And those two guys actually were decent for you. Nick Martin. I mentioned to a feel already. DJ Swearinger. The, uh, this team has not had a very good history when drafting in the second round. Guess what? Most teams don't have a great history. One year of Stephon Diggs is probably going to be better than whatever you get out of a player that you draft in the second round. Facts. And the other part of it, too, is that I, it seemed... It, uh, the reaction seemed to make it... Uh, it portrayed the Texans having no second round picks next year. Which they how have. I say it. Uh, another, one, like, another one already. Right. Exactly. Like they had two. This is the Vikings pick they gave up. Now, you want to be semantics here? This is kind of like the... On, on paper, I would have said, hey, if you're going to void the last three years of the contract, I would have asked the Buffalo Bills to take your second round pick instead of the Vikings second round pick because it's very possible that is like the 35th pick in the NFL draft in 2025. But that's but still, you have a second rounder. So you're you're fine there. You're not just losing draft capital by doing this. And all you've done is bring in a player and really motivated him to be a good teammate, to have a great season, so that way he can hit free agency and get paid. It also immediately takes away any concerns I have about the long-term future of Nico Collins as a Houston Texan. Because now you can pay him, have digs for a year, and find another wide receiver next season. Exactly. Adding the extra money this year and just outright clearing that future money off the books, I think, allows Nick Casario to better negotiate a new deal with Nico Collins. Or you look at it from this perspective, whoever has the better year between Nico Collins and Stefan Diggs, that's the guy who is going to end up sticking around long-term. Because while I love what I saw from Nico Collins last year, it was his first awesome season in the league. Mm -hmm. There's a chance that he does not keep that up, especially now that there are more mouths to feed uh, feed on the offensive side of things. But I, I think that too many people are stressing over 
the idea that you do not have him locked into next year. You can give him the franchise tag if you feel really good about him. And I'm assuming that a move like this is done because one of the next steps that you're going to do is give an extension to Nico Collins because you have freed up more cap space for you in the future. Just seems like it would make a lot more sense for someone who's analytically minded to take care of that as opposed to having that hovering of the, well, we might keep Stephon Diggs, we might not. And on top of that, to the, what you were saying earlier, it does heavily incentivize Stephon Diggs to have the best possible season here in Houston on the field and off the field. Now, Todd, the show brings up on Twitch here, and it's a, it is a, a fair counterpoint that he will be pissed if he does not get targets knowing he's a free agent next year. Yeah, I mean, it's still it's still a concern, of course, but that's a risk the Texans were real, willing to take. And if it doesn't go well, then you just you move on. Like, like yes, I think the Texans are going to be our legitimate Super Bowl contenders this year. If they're not, it's it's not the end of the world. I mean, is he going to have over 100 targets this year? I would imagine the answer to that is is yes. I mean, you look at the way the targets were spread out last year. Nico had over 100, but then Tank, Dalton Schultz, and Robert Woods also had all had over 75 targets. Noah Brown had 55, missing quite a bit of time. He only played in 10 games last year. Stephon Diggs is going to have a 100-plus target season, so the targets will be there. Like, I, I think he'll be fine. And if they're winning, it won't matter. It, well, <laughs> I don't know I about that. I don't know about that with Diggs. That, that's something he has to prove because, I mean, they went 6-1 and one and he was unhappy with his role in the Buffalo offense last year at the end of the season when they changed things up. Yeah. So uh, that this is definitely something to keep in mind. But, you know, to go back to just the original move and people were so gung-ho about the move when it first happened. And now some of the same people that are online who are saying, in Nick Casario, we trust, they're second-guessing it. Make up your effing mind. Yeah. Do you trust him or do you not trust him? This is what I don't understand. You trusted him moments ago. You were excited that he got Stephon Diggs and he did something that makes a lot more sense than extending Shaq Mason right after trading for him, extending Joe Mixon right after trading for him. This makes sense. You don't know that a guy entering year number 10 at wide receiver who is in his early 30s is going to be the same player. But all of a sudden, this is where you're thinking to yourself, oh, I don't know if I trust Nick Casario now after you were doing hula, uh, hula hoop dances and jumping jacks and whatever the hell else the dougie in celebration these are all dated dances of, of the macarena uh, after what he did but, that's, Calm but, down. They, just, but they just did this they did this a, a couple weeks ago this is what texans fans are doing right now they can't make up their mind about what they think of nick casario because they can't get out of the fact that you know davis mills was his first pick ever taken that Kenyon green uh, who's now gonna wear the number 76 uh is is a bust it, it, and even though the success nick casario has had in the draft elsewhere cj stroud Will Anderson. Yeah, but people didn't like the fact that he traded out of the first round for more second round these, picks. But these then, people are such dorks. These people, these draft pick people. No, but Joe. no, but no, but Paul, this is different because this is the same people who are upset about the Diggs trade. Like they just, it's to your point that they can't decide what they do and what they don't like about Nick Casario. But this, but this goes back to the draft pick people. The draft no, it does, yeah. The the draft pick people think that you, it's a lock that you're going to find somebody in the second round. And I mean, just just think about the entire history of the Houston Texans. You can blame it on Rick Smith. You can blame it on Bill O'Brien. But they generally do not hit in the second round. Yeah. Now, Nick Casario does. I'll give him credit for that. Like, Nick Casario, it's a small sample size. Yeah, he's, he's found some good players there. But, no doubt about it. But you can't, you can't think to yourself that you're always going to find a guy in the second round. You hope that you do. You have to have confidence in yourself. But in Stephon Diggs, you are getting a proven player and a one-year rental of Stephon mm -hmm. Diggs for a second round pick is not as expensive as some people are making it out to be. And this is why I hate the draft industrial complex. People overestimate the values of draft picks to a alarming degree. They do, but they're still... I get why people don't like the fact that they gave up a second round pick for a guy that's going to walk after a year, but... To he, me, he might have walked after the year anyway. The though. Deal, exactly. The deal's not that different now. They, they just they, <laughs> right. they made the decision today, not in a year. That's that's really the only difference. They could have made this decision and you know had three and a half million dollars count against their books next year, or still owe him that money before he walked in free agency. That's where I, the the total flip flop of the deal. It's just it, it's the same deal. It, it is the same contract. They just they made a decision right away. They made this decision ahead of time, and it's 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 all the same. It's a good deal. It might blow up in their face. So, like to Todd, the show's point about Diggs not getting enough targets. Yeah, could one day we wake up and the, the Texans have you know they didn't get to draft an elite player because the Vikings did or because the Bills did because you traded that pick. Oh well, I love draft picks. 
But I would rather have Stephon Diggs for a year. You have to look at it from the perspective of these picks aren't useless, but there's just as good of a chance that you miss completely on the pick as finding a player who's going to be a contributor for you. Mm -hmm. And we've, with Stephon Diggs, seen a guy who is more than a contributor at his best, specifically the first half of last season. There are certainly some questions about, okay, how much longer is he going to be able to do this? And I also understand the idea, okay, well, you traded for him and uh, this this is it. But it did already feel like this would have been it anyway. I, I mean, do you think Diggs was going to want to continue to play for that contract that had easy outs the rest of the way? No. Probably not. No, he, he would be thinking about a new deal. So what the Texans did as a sort of compromise here is they pay him more money for this season. And on top of that, they give him the opportunity to hit the free agency market and go wherever the hell he wants, including back here, if he has an awesome season this coming year. But he is going into his 10th year. So th there are reasons, good ones, to give yourself flexibility. And we've learned that Nick Casario likes flexibility. And you would think that the people that have all of a sudden begun saying, in Nick we trust, would realize, yeah, this is what he likes to do. So maybe he should be able to keep doing the thing that he likes to do, create flexibility for the Texans in the short-term future. Would you? So do you think at the root of this, people really don't trust Nick Casario? Because that's the vibe that I get that, you know, it, it's going back to the trade last year, even though it worked out so well for you and seemingly the amount of games he played, but choosing him over Sauce and Kenyon Green and, and taking Davis Mills and all these things that have, have gone very well for you, but at times seem that they couldn't go well mm -hmm. or they wouldn't go well. I, it still does feel like at the root of the issue that people don't really – trust Nick Casario. <laughs> yes. uh, yeah, but they say they do. That's what's funny. Yeah, yeah. Make up your mind. It, 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 I, you know what? If you were consistent one way or the other, uh, it would make sense to me. But to go from, oh my God, they got Stephon Diggs to, oh, well, they're only going to have Stephon Diggs for a year. This is dumb. Like, uh, no, make up your mind. I wonder how much of it is, A, the fact that it's only been like one, it's only been one season of actual results, like good results from it. And the previous, uh, like, five years has all been, oh, my God, the Texans are incompetent. <laughs> oh, my God, they're making a lot of moves, but they're making all the wrong moves. And I wonder if it's, just, it's like a... Uh, you know, like like a shelter uh, dog, a rescue dog, where it's like <laughs> Texans fans don't know don't know how to trust. They don't they they're not ready to put all the, tr the this current GM is better than uh, our last couple GMs, but I don't know. At any moment, at any moment, he could snap and make all the wrong moves again because we've yeah. seen that before. So I think it's it's a little bit of just like they're just you know it's a battered fan base, Paul. It's a battered fan. They're not ready to. To fully give them so open up their hearts to a GM. I, I I would still imagine too. It goes back to the fact that the only reason why Nick Casario is your general manager is because Jack Easterby got on a private jet, flew to Carolina, and stops him from being the general manager of the Carolina Panthers. But it's the, but it's the best thing he did. It is the best. It's the only positive thing Jack. Easterby I mean, did. it's it, and I know people don't. I think some of it has to do with the fact that people just don't want to do Patriots 2.0. Because they feel like it doesn't work anywhere well, else. Yeah. It was bound to work it, somewhere else. It would also be Patriots 3.0 because that was what Bill O'Brien was was Patriots 2 was That's trying true. to was trying he was to a do false Patriots, Patriots 2.0. Yeah, no, but what I'm saying is that like the they they have tried it everywhere in the league. They've also tried it here before, and it and it didn't work. So I think that's some of the original, you know, the like. Uh, first impression was a little bit like, that's all fair. right, yeah. all right, sure, dude. 